Kettleman's Bagels is proud to support Grill This, Smoke That. Kettleman's, makers of wood-fired Montreal-style bagels using only premium ingredients. With three Ottawa locations, Kettleman's menu is available 24-7, 365 days a year. Grill This, Smoke That is generously supported by Oven Brothers, makers of handcrafted Canadian-made wood-burning outdoor ovens for inspired chefs. Visit us at ovenbrothers.ca. Oven Brothers, from our family's backyard to yours. Grill This, Smoke That is brought to you by Furtado Farms. For all your outdoor cooking needs, they're your premium source for cookwood. Whether it's pellets, chips, chunks, or logs, they've got you covered. Visit furtadofarms.ca for more info. Hi, I'm Steph Legary, also known as Steph the Grilling Gourmet. On today's episode of Grill This, Smoke That, we're going to be featuring the dishes from Quebec with my very good friend and owner of Kettleman Bagels, Mr. Craig Buckley. So according to the license plate, it's Je me souviens on Grill This, Smoke That. Today on Grill This, Smoke That, I'm very happy to have my good friend Craig Buckley, owner of Kettleman Bagels, with me. And we're going to talk about the foods of Quebec, yeah. especially Montreal. Yeah. Montreal screams smoked meat. What, what is your association with Montreal? <laughs> well, that's a big question. Uh, association with Montreal, first of all, smoked meat. Right. I don't even remember having it for the first time. Wow. Uh, I, was given to a, uh, I was given a sandwich probably when I was a baby. and. And you just grew up with it. It's something that, you know, was ingrained w with you. Everybody had their favorite restaurants to go to, you know, delis and whatnot. But uh, it's part of the, the multiculturalism of Montreal. You know, you, you have the Jewish influence and the French and the Italian and, and Greeks and everything else. And it all turns into something really special in Montreal. Right. And, of course, you can't go to Montreal without having a really good smoked meat sandwich. And I'm sure you've had a pile of them over your lifetime. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Um, we're going to start off with a whole packer brisket. It's, it's a thing of beauty. I love working with very large cuts of meat yeah. uh, that take a tremendous amount of flavor and uh, precision to get where you're going to go with this sandwich. You know, it, it, it's, 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 it's a task. First of all, what we have to do is we have to take our brisket and we're using a whole packer brisket, which means that there's uh, a flat, which is this point yep. or, or this part. And we've got uh, the, the point, which is very, very fatty. So when you're asking for a sandwich. So in Montreal, you go. always ask for a medium sandwich if you're from Montreal. If, you're, right. if, you're, if you're a tourist, somebody not from Montreal, you always ask for the lean, lean. part. Yeah. But no. if you're a real Montrealer and, and, and you're not worried about your diet too much, you ask for the patty part. Absolutely. That's got the flavor. As a matter of fact, there was a restaurant in, uh, in Montreal. They would slice off you know, the big chunks of fat yeah. and they would put paprika on it nice. and they'd sell it. Wow. The lardo of Montreal. Wow. <laughs> so so we're, we're actually going, there's there's a few different ways that you can do smoked meat. There's a brining method, there's a curing method. Yep. Um, and there's a lot of phosphates and nastiness that go in sometimes in smoked meats as preservatives or yep. special tricks to actually make the pinkness of the meat go that bright, vibrant red. Exactly. And a real true smoked meat won't necessarily have that bright red, smoky uh, undertone. Like, I mean, with this, this, this rub that we're using is a formulation of um, sugar, salt, black pepper, ground cloves, and bay leaf. And essentially what you're doing is you're crushing all of that to formulate a lovely mixture like this. And uh, it's, it's something that you just want to sprinkle on top of the meat and essentially put it in. But this is where the magic happens. It takes 10 days, 10 days for this to actually cure with the, um, with the dry rub that's put on it. So this has been sitting for 10 days in the fridge. And the only thing left to do is actually put it in the smoke. So we're going to take it from this big, beautiful plate. We're going to put it in the platter, and uh, the only thing left is actually we're going to go to the grill. Well, this big, beautiful brisket 
is about to see its time in the smoke. My Kamado Joe has been set for 220 degrees, very low heat, very, very low heat. We're going to put it on. It's already seasoned. It's ready to go. Snap a glove off. Little apple wood. See you in about 12 to 14 hours. On today's tool segment, I want to talk about the grilling basket. It's large, in charge, and you can put a ton of stuff in there. Things that tend to run away on the grill, like mushrooms, whole mushrooms are round, they run around. If you put them all in here, you can toss them in the basket because it's got nice tall sides that are actually angled. So you can actually even pick it up and give it a little saute toss. That's what the little handles are for, I guess. They're perforated so that the heat goes through, draining all of that liquid out of the bottom. So there's great conductivity of heat and it is easily washable. You can throw this thing right in the dishwasher after you give it a light scrubbing because there is gonna be some, you know, charred on bits. I love it. Grilling baskets, great tool for the barbecue.